Hi class, this video is going to help with um, 5.2 or 12.2 in business calc. And I'm going to share my screen. This section is over integration by parts. So in the business calc, this one is um, a little more basic. So if you're not from my class, it might give you a good idea of the basics. So this one, we're going to be reversing that chain rule. The only thing we've gone over really is um, using the log and adding one and dividing by that number um, to go from our integral back to our original function or derivative to original function. So integrals or antiderivatives, same thing. Okay, so let's look at the idea of the chain rule. So the idea of the chain rule is we took the derivative of something outside with something inside. And that function outside could have been to a power, it could have been a log, it could have been an e to an x. Um, but we had more than just an x wherever this was at. And we had that rule of you do whatever's on the outside, derivative of the outside, keeping the inside, times the derivative of the inside. Okay, so derivative of the outside, keeping the inside the same times the derivative of the inside. So we've done that before. To undo that, we should already have the derivative of the outside and the inside. So basically, we're going to have to look at this inside stuff and double check that it matches this part. Okay, and then we're going to undo the outside. So we're going to undo the outside and make sure that the derivative outside checks. So let me go ahead and go through a couple problems. So let's look at something, the e to the x ones tend to be a little easier, so we'll start there. What if I have 3x squared e to the x to the third minus 1 um, dx? If this is my integral, how am I going to do or find the the original function or the antiderivative, how am I going to solve this integral? Well, I'm going to look and think the main function is e to some power. I'm going to ignore this part over here for a second, and I'm going to let u equal x to the third minus 1. That exponent is going to be our u. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative, the du, of this part here, that exponent on the e. That would give me 3x squared. And then I look and I see if that's what's out front. Is the derivative what's being times out front? So great. So we did the chain rule on this when originally, and we kept e to the power, and then we times it by the derivative of the inside. So what's my answer? What I can do from here is I'm going to substitute in my u's. So this part here is going to become du. This part here is going to become e to the u. So I'm going to write this as e to the u du. I always like the du on the right, even though it's substituting in for this part. So then how would I solve this? I would get e to the u plus e because e to the u is e to the u. Then I substitute back in the original u and I'll get e to the x to the third minus one plus c. And that's my answer. How can I double check that? I take the derivative. The derivative of this is keeping this, which we had originally, times the derivative of the inside, which is right there. Okay, so that's our u substitution. Let's look at couple more examples here. This one's a little bit tricky. Question two, what if we have 1 over 1 plus x to the third? Um, well, I'm going to write this as a little bit 3x squared up here because this is the way we'll see it. The x. Okay, so what if I have a fraction like that? Well, my first thought is, well, is there a quotient rule? Nope. So we're still going to use substitution. So the idea is, we know if we have 1 over something, it's a natural log. So if we have a fraction, we're going to think of this as the natural log. So I'm going to let this be the u part. So u is equal to 1 plus x to the third. 
So our derivative of that, the one would disappear, so we'd have 3x squared. And that part does match, yes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this again as one over u times du. What would be the derivative of this? Now the du matches, du matches. What would be the derivative of this? It would be natural log of the absolute value, remember to add that in, um, uh, plus c, okay? So then we put in our u value and I'd get natural log of the absolute value of one plus x to the third plus c. So if I took the derivative of this, it would become one over what stays the same times the derivative of the inside, which would pick up that three x squared. Okay, so if it's a fraction, you can think of using the denominator as your u and then natural log to solve that one. Um, thinking, thinking, thinking. Ooh, here's one. What if I have x squared plus 2x plus 5 all to the fifth power times 2x plus 2 dx. So there's my integral on that one. Okay, take a second and see if you can figure out what you should represent on this one. Okay, you should be this part and we're hoping the derivative of this matches this. So our u value will be x squared plus 2x plus 5, and our derivative of that will become 2x plus 2. 5 drops off, all right? So we're there. That matches that. Fabulous. We're going to have some where it doesn't <clears throat> exactly match. So then we are know that this is u to the fifth du. Substituting our u's in. So this one will become add one, and you're gonna get u to the six divided by six um, plus c. So substitute that in, and we'd get, oops, I was gonna put a u again. We'd get this x squared plus two x plus five, all to the sixth power, all over six plus c. Ta-da! If I took the derivative of this, I'd take the six down front, they would cancel. I'd have this original to the fifth, plus, then I would times it by the derivative of the inside, not plus, but times it by the derivative of the inside. So it works, okay? All right, next example. It's not gonna be quite as perfect. Where's that one? It's got the 30 on it, perfect right here. So this is my fourth example here. What if I have something like the integral of x to the fifth over three plus five x to the sixth dx? Okay, so I have something like this. What should I let u equal? The denominator, okay? So u is going to equal 3 plus 5x to the 6th. What's going to be the derivative of that? du would be the 3 drops off. 6 times 5 is 30x to the 6th. I mean 5th. Go down one when your derivatives, not keep the same. Okay, there's my derivative. 6 times 5 is 30 minus 1. So they don't match. They're missing a, I'm missing a 30 here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide this 30 on this over here, divide this 30 so that it matches the x to the fifth. So I'm gonna have to have du divided by 30 equals x to the fifth. So I can find what I have to do by solving for what's there over here on this u. Bear with me. So then over here, I'm going to have um, basically one over, u, and then instead of just du, I'll have du divided by 30. So I'm going to figure out the 1 over u, and then I'm going to basically keep that 30 in the denominator. 
Okay, so one over u, the derivative of that would be natural log absolute value of u, right? Um, plus c, but then I have to times it by this one over 30 plus the c. So this one over 30 I get from here. Because the du kind of goes away when I do the integral, not kind of, it does. And so I'm still left with that 30. Okay, so, and it's in the denominator, so it's one over 30. So my final answer is gonna be the natural log of the u was three plus five x to the sixth plus c divided by 30 times 1 30th. It will accept it any way you write it. So some of the methods show you to pull the 1 30th out front. So some of the methods show to pull the 1 30th out front and then you would leave the du here. Totally fine. Calculate and then times by the 1 30th because I can pull out a constant and it would stay in my antiderivative and my original derivative. So um, either way that you wanna do that with that number. Okay, a little bit tricky. I thought I, I opened another sheet with some examples because I thought I had another one with a value missing. Okay, but I don't see one on here. That one's just like what we did. Oh, um, what if I had, well, no, we did that in the last chapter. I think we're good with that concept. Hold on. Boo, boo, boo. Um, let's see. Sorry, maybe I should have had one more example ready. See, but this du is still, okay, let's try this one. Let's just do one more here, and then um, I, there'll be more examples from the book as well that you can watch the examples from. Okay, so let's go to x times x minus 3 dx. Okay, so this one is a little bit tricky, so I wanted to do this one. Well, or I've been trying to find some tricky ones. We know that we should let our u equal what's under here. So our u is going to equal x minus 3. So our du is just 1. That's kind of tricky. Um, but I have an x out here. What can I do about that x? Well, I can use my u notation and solve for x. So here goes a little bit of a trick, but I could add that three over and u plus three is the same as x. So I can't keep an x in to use my u substitution. So I'm gonna use this part. So this, x right here is going to become u plus 3. Okay, integral. And then this part here is going to become u to the 1 half, or I'm going to write this like this. It would be u, square root of u, or u to the 1 half. du du, which is just a one on there. We didn't have anything we had to divide. So our inside wasn't missing part, but this is still a little bit different. Okay, so what are we going to do from here? Okay, we're going to take and times this by each of these because I don't have a product rule necessarily. So we're going to times this by this. Um, there is one, we just aren't using it yet. One half plus one is going to give me three halves plus three times u to the one half. So here's where I'm at now. So I'm just multiplying that through. And then from here, I am going to add one on this one. So three halves plus one, it's like adding two because two make a whole. So that's gonna become five halves. So this right here is gonna become um, u to the five halves over five halves. 
And this one over here, you keep the three and it's gonna become um, u to the three halves when I add one divided by three halves. So you flip these and multiply, and I would get two u to the five halves over five. And over here, I would get um, six, because two times three is six, u to the three halves over three. U, now let's put our u back in and paper's kind of hitting that. I can raise it a little bit. So our final answer will be 2x minus 3 to the 5 halves over 5 plus 6. Oh, 3 goes into 2. I can reduce this number here to 2. So um, 2, it will make you 2. So x minus 3 to the three halves plus C. Oops, I didn't have my plus C there, but woo, not so pretty. So I can use part, if I have something out front that's like, shouldn't be there, I would have to solve here with my U, what I let U be equal to make everything have a U. Okay. Mm. Let's do one more. I found one more that has something tricky. And then, okay, this is my sixth example. What if I have the integral of e to the 5x times 8 plus e to the 5x squared? Okay, when I look at this, what do you think u should be? Yep, I think U should be what's inside the parentheses. What is the derivative of that? The derivative, the DU, is going to be the 8 disappears. You keep E to the 5X, but it's a, a chain rule, so you have to times it by the derivative of, of the exponent, which is a 5. So you could write that as 5E to the 5X. Okay, what am I missing? This part has to do with the du, not just the u. I didn't have an extra x out here, but I did, I am missing a five. So I can't substitute du for e to the x. This should have a d, the x. <clears throat> I can't substitute that in because of the five. So I'm going to divide the five over so that you have du divided by five equals e to the 5x. So when I substitute these back in, I do like to write that at the end, but this part is going to become u squared. And then our du is going to be du, and then I can write the one fifth out here. I could have write the du divided by five here. Either way. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do my antiderivative, which makes u to the third over three plus c. And I still have to times this entire thing by one-fifth. Well, I don't times this part by one-fifth. I don't want the C to have a five under it. So what will this be here? This would be U to the third over 15 um, plus the C. And then this part, I need to substitute back in my u, so my u would give me 8 plus e to the 5x, all to the third power, over 15 plus c. Ta-da. So I had another number missing on my du on that one. All right, hopefully you find this video helpful. Again, there's more videos from the, the, and PowerPoints from the company in the lectures.